Hi everybody, let me introduce myself. My name is Denise Hoffman and I am super excited about this new project that I'm gonna be doing. I'm super excited that Protier has decided that this is something cool for the limb loss community. Um, and let me just give you a little bit of a history. So I am obviously an above the knee amputee. Um, I am a mom of three girls. You can see some of their pictures right there. I'm married. I live in the St. Louis area and I'm a nurse. Um, so a little bit about my background as an amputee. When I was 12 years old, I was diagnosed with osteosarcoma, bone cancer. Um, had a bunch of surgeries for limb salvage. Um, initially they saved my leg and chemotherapy. And then um, my senior year in high school, it failed. So I had to have a, like three more surgeries to try and repair it. During my freshman year in college, I, they realized that it was starting to break in another spot. And it was at that time that I decided, you know what, I just wanna get on with my life, so let's just go ahead and amputate. So as you can see, I'm right above the knee amputee. Um, and that was 31 years ago, which seems like a lifetime. Well, it pretty much is a lifetime, I guess. Um, so, you know, back then there wasn't really any social media or support groups. I think the APT coalition was around, but it, um, it wasn't very big or very active at that point. So I just continued on with my life and, um, went on, completed school, became a nurse. Uh, I actually got to work on the floor with some of the nurses that took care of me and some of the doctors in the hospital. So that was pretty amazing experience to be able to do that. Um, and then, I don't know, fast forward, you know, got married, had kids, and I really never met another amputee until, I think it was probably about nine years ago when Freedom Innovations asked if I wanted to trial their knee, which was the plie knee. And of course I was super excited. I'm like, wait, I get to try something? This is amazing. So I, I did and I love the plie. And so then the rep asked if I would like to become a patient model, which I thought was kind of funny because, you know, modeling generally isn't something that um, amputees do. Um, Anyway, that I'd never been asked to do. But so what that really meant was I would go with them to the big conferences for um, the orthotists and prosthetists and work with them in, their, in the exhibit hall in their booth and talk to people about why I love the plie and um, you know what a difference it made being able to trial a prosthetic device and find the right fit for me. So um, let's see, then where did it go from there? So back in 2015, um, there was a, an LCD proposal where Medicare was proposing to change the qualifications of who would be eligible for some of our advanced technologies like the microprocessor knees, microprocessor ankles, any of that kind of technology. Um, obviously that would hinder like how many people would be able to receive that device. You know, I think some of the things that they talked about was, you know, if you had any kind of cardiac condition, uh, if you used any kind of assistive device at all, then you wouldn't be eligible for microprocessor technology. So um, Jim Weber, who was the um, CEO of the prosthetist office that I go to here in St. Louis, was very involved with AOPA, which is the American Orthotic and Prosthetic Association and they were getting some people together to go to Washington, D.C. to um, sit on, in on the hearing. Well, I don't know if it's called a hearing, but to sit in on um, when the, the discussions about this. So some representatives for the orthotic and prosthetic community, as well as the amputee community got up and, and you know spoke why they thought this was a bad idea. And then we all went to in front of HHS in Washington, D.C. with our picket signs and we protested. And it was pretty amazing because on that day, they, they realized that, you know what, we need to have conversations about this. 
and um, the proposal to change qualifications for advanced technologies or microprocessor um, technologies was then tabled and so it never got put through um, which was pretty amazing like I don't think it usually happens that way when you're um, going and advocating for something like that so that was the beginning of my legislative advocacy um, from there I got involved with the amputee coalition and their advocacy efforts which was called Hill Day and where you'd go once a year and we talk about pertinent things or sometimes we actually have had some um, bills that we wanted to enact for the limb loss and limb difference community. Um, so let's see what else. Um, so then I also got more involved with the Amputee Coalition. I became part of their CIMAC committee, which is their Scientific Medical Advisory Committee. Uh, and what we do is we help create a lot of the resources that are available for the community. So, you know, the first step guide, I helped with the newest edition of that. We completed last year the hemipelvectomy and hip disarticulation booklet. Um, currently, I'm working on the sex and intimacy guide with a very amazing OT who, um, who specializes in um, sex and intimacy therapy for people with disabilities. Um, what are some of the other things we've done? I don't know, we've done so many amazing things. I, I was guest editor actually of In Motion Magazine and content writer for three issues of that a few years ago. So I've been very involved in the community um, through that aspect for creating resources. Um, also on the flip side of that, I continued in doing more things with Freedom Innovations. And so pre-pandemic, I was doing probably two to three trips a month um, with our clinical prosthetist and doing continuing education courses in different prosthetist offices across the country. Basically, we would go in and we would teach people how to program the knee. Um, and then I would also be able to talk about resources um, for their patients and make sure that their patients were getting everything that they could to make sure that they were having good outcomes. Um, we would also help with prosthetic trials. So if a patient wanted to try um, some of the knees or feet, we would go in and we would help with that. So as you can see, over the last nine years, I've gotten to have, I've got to have so many different amazing experiences on the manufacturing side, on the MPT Coalition side, with AOPA and doing some of their legislative advocacy. And so I've decided I'm, I have so much knowledge and so many resources that I want to make sure that everybody out there knows everything that I know that we decided to start this series and it's called The Dish with Denise. And I'm super excited and grateful that Prodeer has decided to sponsor me to do this, that they realized that this would be an amazing thing for the limb loss and limb difference community to be able to get these resources and this information out to you guys. So stick with me and look for future episodes of anything and everything that could be pertinent to the limb loss and limb difference community. And then also please reach out to me if there's something that you want to learn about or want to do behind the scenes about or know how it works or what this organization is, is it all about, please let me know because I'm here for you guys and I want, I just want to make sure that you guys can learn everything that there is for our community to have the best outcomes and to live a happy and healthy and successful life as a person living with limb loss and limb difference. So we'll see you on the next episode. Bye.